to say anything else. We need just to sit there and think and meditate of what we have seen and heard. Sister Rees, take care of that gift. It is not yours, it is ours. Praise the name of the Lord. We need it here. In Jesus' name. How good it is to see what the Lord can do. You know, one thing I like is to, see, to hear that power of prayer. Let the God go up and the devil go down and he remain there. In Jesus' name. Amen. If there is something that I do pay attention to is when people are praying. Because I love prayers. And I know what prayers can do. Wow. Emily. May God remember you tonight. Let that anointing flow afresh upon you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Zoom charge, I'm trusting you are enjoying yourself there in the presence of God. And what God, God is doing here, the power of God is coming down onto your home, into your wherever you are, and something is happening in Jesus' name. I'm so glad to be here this morning, and I'm happy to be a partaker of the doings of the Lord. And that's why. I could imagine myself missing to see and to hear and to partake what God is releasing onto our lives. And I'm so blessed, no, I'm still trying to put myself together. And uh, let me say thanks to pastor and mom. As I may say, you are the best pastors that we have ever had and whom we have ever had. You are blessings unto us. And let me take this chance and opportunity to say thank you, even for giving us such an opportunity to come and see God working in us. And your work is not in vain. There's a word in heaven that is waiting for you. And also let me be, uh, say thank you for giving me this opportunity to come and share the word of God together with the saints of God. Those who are there on Friday, uh, I was given another chance to come and be together with the brethren. And I had a word that was, uh, that was put on my spirit by God that I, was, uh, that I was sharing with the people who are who logged in on that day. And later, pastor called me and he asked me to come and continue with the same message today because he felt that is the message that we need and the word that we need that will help us and enable us to go to the next step. And for sure, I have been thinking about this one. And to some point, I keep on feeling like it is not myself who is supposed to preach it. I'm supposed to sit somewhere and listen to somebody speaking the, the, the one because it is working in me. It is changing my life. 
And from yesterday, the whole of last night and this morning, I was still thinking about it. And I realized it is the world that we need for sure. I want to promise you one thing. You might not get the whole sermon, but you might get one one that will bring a revolution until you arrive in Jesus name. My message this morning, I want to talk about break the calm. Hallelujah. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless you and we exhort you for allowing us to come and to be in your presence. King of all glory, we came because we need you. We came, Father, because we cannot do without you. We are so hungry and thirsty, O oh Lord, ready to receive and to hear from you. Let the wand of God come forth, O oh Lord, and leash unto us, O oh Father, with the clarity and simplicity. And let this one, Father, change us forever. Help us, O oh God, and give us the grace. And I declare in Jesus' name, the devil and the enemy that will come to steal the wand of God. I destroy and I break every setup and all strategies of the enemy to hinder and to prevent your people from receiving the, uh, your one and to be blessed by your one and to be changed by your one. I declare this one, it will fall into a good soil and it will bear fruit and it will, uh, it will change our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter one. I'll read from uh, verse six up to verse eight. And I thank God because this morning, I believe I'll have uh, enough time to speak more about what or to bring out more of what the spirit of God have put in my spirit. On Friday, you know, we normally have very limited time. And now those who are there, I want to say you be more benefactor of this one because you have what you heard on Friday and what you hear today. It will be a blessing. And the Bible says, the Lord our God said to us at, uh, at Holeb, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break, come, and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go to all neighboring peoples in the Alba, in the mountains, in the west, uh, western foothill in the Najib and along the coast to the land of Canaanites and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the Euphrates. See, I have given you this land, go in and take possessions of the land that the Lord sold, he will give to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their descendants after them. I want to believe this is not the first time for you to hear this kind of message being preached from the same scripture. From the uh, time I get saved, I have heard so many preachers preaching out of these uh, scriptures and these ones from Deuteronomy chapter one and about breaking the camp. But today I don't want to speak about what maybe you have heard other preachers preaching. I don't want to talk about breaking camps that are physical. I want to speak, uh, to speak about breaking camps that are spiritual. Camps, the mental camps, spiritual camps, and emotional camps. In the days that you are living in, and time that you are in. So many of us, we are suffering 
because we are in the camps that we are living in that are holding us and we cannot able to advance and to go forth to become that what God created us to become or go to places to achieve and to get what God intended us to have or to go forth to where our blessings and our possessions are. And this morning, I want to bring unto you and unto me this one to let you know a time has come for us to break the camp and to advance and to go forth so that we can able to receive our blessings and to go where our destiny is, where we can live the life that God who created us, intending us or intended us to live, to fulfill his purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. When I just was a few And as I was reading these couple of verses, I have read it like almost 10 times or maybe 15 to 20 times. Since uh, the Lord put this message unto me. And the more I lead it, the more I see some new things that are coming up out of these scriptures. And one of the things that I discovered or the state of the Lord revealed unto me, it is about that praise that God honored. We know by this time, the reason why God was telling the children of Israel to break the camp and to go forth, to advance, to go into a hillside, it is because that where they were, it is not where God wanted them to be. They lived in that place for 40 years. Remember, when uh, the children of Israel were coming from Egypt, at a certain point, they, uh, they became stiff, uh, their necks were stiff. They could not listen to God. And when God sent the spies to the land of Canaan to go and spy and to bring the report, we know the story. I don't want to go into scriptures, I mean, uh, to the details of all that story uh, so that I have enough time to speak of what is in my spirit. But God told them, those who did not believe, in what God told them and what God commanded them, God told Moses, not one of them that will enter into the promised land except Joshua and Caleb. And we all know they died in the wilderness and they spent 40 years in the wilderness until that generation that came from Egypt of the people who saw God performing miracles and is uh, delivering them from Egyptian and doing great miracles along the way. They, they uh, still, they did not brought themselves to a point of where they could trust God and believe in God. And so God decided to do away with them, but he said he gonna lay the generation of the children that came from them and he will take them to the promised land. Praise the name of the Lord. The mistake they did, it is to keep on complaining when God was trying to help them and to bless them. My prayer today is may we not be found to be the people who keep on complaining just because of uh, uh, a little trouble and maybe a little situation that come on our way. Maybe because you lack money today or you are being written off in your, at your uh, working place or maybe you went out of finances and you forget what God have done unto your life yesterday and start thinking like today God have left you because you lack something just literal for one day or for a short time. I want to bring a question to us. Anytime you see yourself being in a situation that is hard and difficult, God is using it to prepare you to take you to another level. Hallelujah. Become a person of appreciating what God is doing in your life. He is still God 
in time of uh, abundance, he is still God in time where this, uh, when there is nothing. Hallelujah. God never changed and he never been changed by anything. He meant to be God, being night or day, being summer or winter. He will remain to be God and he will remain to be God forever in Jesus' name. And so they came into this place that was called Horeb. Horeb, it was a mountain. In other words, it was called a mountain of God. The reason why it was called a mountain of God, there are so many great things that were happening and happened in this place. And I want to believe the reason why God brought this, uh, the children of Israel into this place. It is, because, uh, it is because it was a place where the presence of God was. And God intended for these children as they grow up because they had no experience of God like their fathers and their mothers so that they can go knowing there is God in heaven, a God who takes care of them. And to make you understand more better how great this mountain was. Remember uh, the Eastern when Moses had the first encounter with God. Remember the story of burning bush? It happened in this mountain. This is where Moses met with God at the first time. And God spoke to Moses when he sent him to go and deliver the children of Israel. The second thing that we can look at, it is found, uh, uh, that is in uh, Exodus chapter 3 and verse 1. Exodus 17 and verse, uh, verse 5, from verse 7. There, it is in the same place that God told Moses to start the log, and water came out of that log, and the children of Israel could find water to drink when they were thirsty. Hallelujah. It is a place where miracles were happening. It is a place where great things were happening. The name is horrid. In the same place, that's where God gave Israel the Ten Commandments. Hallelujah. And I know some of us are going to get confused because you know the same place as Mount Sinai. But I have come to let you know and to encourage you to go and read the Bible. You will, uh, you will discover some hidden things that are there and you will enjoy the word of the Lord. The same mountain, Mount Sinai, is the same mountain that was called Holy. And that's where God spoke unto Moses and he gave them the Ten Commandments. I don't want to go into detail. It is in the same mountain where God gave the children of Israel uh, the covenant or he made covenant with them and he told them now uh, this far I have come with you, and now you have seen what I have done. I brought you from Egypt, and you saw the miracles I did there, how I destroyed the Egyptians, and how I brought you from Egypt, calling you with the wings of eagle. I brought you to this land, and now because of how I love you, I will make you to be my people. If only you're going to follow my commandment, and you obey me. I'll make you to become a nation and you will become the pre a nation of priesthood. Hallelujah. And that's why Peter tells us we are chosen generation. If you are in Jesus Christ, you are chosen generation. You are, uh, you are a son of the kingdom, a loyal priesthood. Hallelujah. Are we together so far? It's the same place where God told Elijah, go to Mount Holly. When Elijah was running away from uh, that lady, what's her, uh, her name? Jezebel. God told Elijah, wake up and go. I want to meet you at Mount Holly. It was a special place where the presence of God was dwelling. But it came to a point whereby God realized now these children, they have matured enough and now they know that I am God. Now they know Moses, my servant, he is my servant. And now it is time 
for them to advance and to move out of this prey and to go to where I intended them to go, where their promises is, and where they were supposed to go, where God promised his, uh, his servant and his friend Abraham, he will take his generation and his, uh, his people. And I have come to tell you, most of us, even today, there are prayers that we are in, and we, we are kind of comfortable by where God has praised us. But I want to remind you, where you are today, that is not the end of you. That is not where God wants you to remain. God have a great plan, a great, a great deal and visions about you. He wants you to advance and to go forth because he wants to do mighty things through you. He wants to advance you. He wants to extend your territories. He wants to bless you. He wants to bring you up and to give you a name, a name that will make his name to be glorified. Hallelujah. And this morning I have come to tell you, it is time to break the count and to move forward. Hallelujah. As I say, I don't want to talk about breaking the count that are physical. Because most of us, it is not because of what we have that is holding us. It is because of what we see physically that is holding us back, but it is what we have put in our mind. It is what we are holding in our heart. Our preacher today, Emily, have told us, some of us because of unforgiveness, we cannot able to advance. We cannot able to receive the blessings of God. We cannot even go to heaven or rather we will not go to heaven because we cannot forgive others. Yet we are expecting God to forgive us. That is a come. Hallelujah. And forgiving is a come. You have to break it. You have to move out of it. You have to tell God to help you so that you can move forward and receive the blessings of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And in that praise, Mount Holly, as I say, it was a special praise where the presence of God was dwelling. In the presence of God, I want to bring it across to you and unto me, it is where we can find security. In the presence of God, it is where we can have provision. In the presence of God, it is where we can enjoy the peace of God. In the presence of God, it is where there is fullness of joy. In the presence of God, it is where we can move freely because God has set us free. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the presence of God, that's where God set his people free. In the presence of God, that's where all of us we desire to be and to remain. But it had come to a point whereby now God needs you to come out of that your comfort zone and start advancing because the Bible tells us God will never leave us and he will never forsake us. As we move, he will go together with us. And as we remain faithful and we remain uh, and we follow his one and his commandment, he will remain upon us in us and his presence will move together with us until we reach to the promised land where our blessing is in the mighty name of Jesus. And now I know some of us, maybe uh, and all of us who are here, when I look at you, I can tell you, you have not reached where God intended you to go. I can tell you there is something that is short of you that God wants to accomplish and to make it complete in your life. But you have to take a step forward so that you can open up yourself and you can position yourself for God to stretch his hand and to touch you and to bring his glory onto your life. Hallelujah. Some of us, we are being held because of the camp of fear. We are living in the camp of fear. And your fear 
uh, you don't you do what God has commanded you to do or what God has put in your spirit because you are saying, if I do this, what people are going to say? If I go, what, what will happen? What if I fail? What if God is not with me? What if something bad will happen and people will laugh at me? I have come to tell you, if you have God in you, whether you fail or you succeed, to God, he receive the glory. Hallelujah. And one thing I like is what David said, even when I sleep, I'm not meaning the sleep of sleeping, or even if I slide, I will not fall because God will hold me up and he will give me, uh, give me the strength to rise up again and move forward. Hallelujah. Do not fear people. Do not even fear the devil. Do not fear of anything else. The only fear God wants you to have, it is the fear of God. Hallelujah. And God will help you. As long as you are ready to move forward, God will move with you. That's why God told Jeremiah, tell the children of Israel, I know the plan I have for you. Praise the name of the Lord. The plan of God, it is not for you to remain where you are. It is good God has given you a good job. You are making good money. It is good God has given you a good husband, a good wife, and you have a good family. That's a blessing. It is good God has given you money. You can do anything. You have, when you have a need of a thousand, two thousand dollars, that is not a big deal to you. You don't have to think twice. That is good. But that is not where God wants you to remain. He wants to give you more and more. Hallelujah. In Psalms 15, 115, the Bible says, the heaven and heavenries belongs to God, but the earth he has given it to the sons of men. Hallelujah. My question is, you are comfortable with the house that you have. You are comfortable with the car that you have. You are comfortable with the money that you have. Yet God has given you the whole world. Hallelujah. For us who have come outside the country, I want to tell you this is not the end. God still wants to take you places. And those who are here, God wants to take you to other places. Praise the name of the Lord. The earth is, uh, it has been given unto you. And God is telling you, it is time to break the camp and advance and go to hillside, go to the mountainside. You know, when the Bible talks about the hill, it talks about to go a place that is higher than where you are. When you go onto the top of the mountain, the Bible says, the higher you go, not the Bible, but I think that is. <laughs> that is science. They, they say the higher you go, the cooler it will become. Is it cool where you are? Praise the name of the Lord. I'm asking a question. Where you are, is it cool? God wants to take you somewhere more cooler, where you'll be comfortable, where you'll relax, where you enjoy the blessings of the Lord, where there is no sorrow. Amen. Break the calm and advance. Your blessings and your promises are ahead of you. God is waiting for you to advance and to take you where he promised he gonna take you so that you can go and live the life he intended you to live. Hallelujah. Listen on to me. You know, I've been thinking and I was trying to look at my life and I was asking myself, what am I supposed to do so that I can able to advance, to go to that Praise where it is cool, it is peaceful, it is where my blessings are. And I want to remind you 
I'm kind of a guy who likes to talk crazy stuff. And I like to talk that to motivate myself to see great things and to make myself trust God for great things. I always say when I study this pulpit that I'm one of the billionaires of our days. And I don't care what you look at me and you see. The truth is, this is the color of a billionaire. My prayer is, may God give you many days because you'll come to see it coming to pass. In Jesus' name. I have tried my God before and I have seen what he can do. And now I know he have never fall short of his strength, his power, his glory. He have never short of uh, strength and power to do much and get a miracle. He is a good God. Hallelujah. I am going somewhere. We are going somewhere. Our families are going somewhere. Don't allow yourself to be blinded by what you are seeing now. Don't allow the problems and troubles that you are in today make you not to see what God is doing in your life and where God is taking you. I told you before, the problem that you are in now, the situation that look hard and difficult is today, it is not for destroying you or bringing you down. It is preparing you for what God has kept your hand of you. Hallelujah. It is two court years for God to prepare Moses to go and deliver the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together? And, you know, even as I'm speaking, I hear, I cannot be able to speak everything that is coming to my life, I mean, to my spirit. But I'm getting excited because I like this kind of a preaching or talking. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, break the camp. To break the camp, it means to bring down the tent to uproot and to destroy or to make everything that is standing to bring it down to a point whereby you cannot use it anymore. The comfort that you are in, do not allow yourself because of the money that you are making today to hinder you, to go where God wants to take you. Maybe God have kept you in that company that you are working in because he wants to use you and to lift you up and to advance you to a point whereby soon or later, he's gonna make you to be a CEO of that company so that you can be of a great blessing to others and to many people and to your family. Hallelujah. Maybe God wants to lift you up and to increase you with wisdom and knowledge and skills in the area of business where you are working in because you want to entrust you with more money that you can become a financial pillar in his house and his kingdom. Hallelujah. I'd like to, prom uh, to, pro to promise uh, to my brother, George. And uh, even this morning, I want to tell you, by the way, I'm on a prophet, but I know how to speak the word of God. And I know that spoken one have power. You are this coming a tycoon of little Esti. In Jesus' name. In every field that you are in, I want to see yourself being the one who is controlling things there. And even if you're not comfortable in where you are and the work, kind of work that you're doing, be faithful because God is about to open a door and to take you to a position and place where he intended and he wants you to be, where you will excel and where there is fullness. In Jesus' name, break the calm, advance your thinking and your faith, lift up your believing 
and see God doing great things in your life. There are so many people in the Bible who were not comfortable by the kind of life that they, are, they were living. And they decided to break the camp and they advanced their faith. They advanced their believing. They advanced their strength and they trusted God. And when they decided to move forward, God came like a plant and he lifted them up. He uplifted uh, uh, them, he elevated them and their life changed completely. And today we are leading their stories in the Bible. Hallelujah. And because of time, I might not be able to go through so many examples, but I want to bring unto you a close one character that God reminded, uh, reminded me about last night. And I want to bring an example of the four rapers. In 2 Kings chapter 7, if you read from verse 1, or rather if you want, start from chapter 6, you read the whole story. And I know the story, I don't, uh, I'm not going into details. But the Bible tells us in Samaria, there was a problem and there was a drought. Because they were being in, uh, invaded by the enemies, the Amalekites, and they surrounded them and they put, with, uh, they put them at a sea. They could not be able to go out the city, nor anybody come inside the city. And at the same time, these far rapers, they, uh, they were sick. And according to the law of Israelites, if you could, uh, if you got sick and you had uh, leprosy, you could not stay with others. You were supposed to be taken outside the camp or outside the city, outside the gate, where you stay until you get healed. If you don't get healed, you'll die there. But if God have mercy on you and you get healed, then you'll be able to come back and, uh, into the city. And now in this situation, these four rapers, they were outside the city, outside the gate, and when they were there, the situation was uh, in, uh, inside the city, they could not be able to go back. One, they had leprosy. Number two, in, inside the, uh, the camp, they were dying. people were dying of hunger. And number three, they were rejected and they were, uh, nobody wanted to associate with them. Hallelujah. Their circumstances, nothing was, pro, uh, I mean, uh, nothing was, uh, the months are running out of my mind. Nothing was favoring them. Everything was working against them. But it came to a point whereby they looked at themselves and they were changing words and conversations and they asked themselves, now here we are, true and the fact is we are about to die. One, we're gonna die because of this disease. Number two, we're gonna die because of hunger. Number three, we're gonna die because nobody want to help us. We are outcasted. Nobody want to associate himself with us. And number four, we don't know what else we can do or where we can go. But one of them came up with an idea and he told them, in this camp that we are, it is the camp of rejection, the camp of pain, the camp of sickness and diseases, the camp whereby we are about to die. And the only thing now can help us is to do a radical thing. One, we cannot go back to the camp or to the city because they will not open the gate for us. And even if we go there, the same hunger that is killing us here, it is there. The, uh, inside the city. And now, on the other side, ahead of us along the corner, the enemies of uh, Samaria, we can see them where they are. And there we know they have everything. Before in those days, when any kingdom or king went to fight with another kingdom or with another king, the first thing they were doing is to take everything variable. And they were 
hoarding it or they were taking it and then they were destroying the whole city. And that's what these, uh, they came from Samaria, uh, uh, no, I mean, they came from Amorites did. They, they had every good thing you could think of, starting with the food, gold and silver, and all kind of good things. And they were there with them in the camp where the army was. And so these poor rapers say, we have to break this camp of self-pity and self-denial, and we have to move forward. If we go to the city, uh, the truth is we are going to die there. And even if we go to these people, to, we have two chances. If they receive us, well and good. If they kill us, we have nothing to lose. And so they decided, let's go to them. One thing they knew is it was not easy. They were facing death. And so they decided to do what we call suicidal. And they went for that mission. They live or they die. Most of us, we are in that kind of a camp. Where we are is not favorable for us. The people we are living together with them, they don't understand us. We are trying to do everything, but they don't understand us. Where we are working, things are not good. And it is not because we cannot change our working place and go to another job. But the thing that is holding us there, it is fear. If I let this uh, job go, am I, will I gonna get another job? Listen on to me. God have come and he is with you. He wants you to break that camp of fear and he wants you to advance. Go to a hillside, advance your faith, advance your thinking, advance your belief. And you are going to see the hand of God working and operating in your life because God is with you. He will never forsake you and he will never leave you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And so these four lepers, they decided to go. The moment they break that camp, God created a situation. The king inside the uh, Samaria, he was angry with Elisha because he said, this what is happening here, it have come from God. This is God who is terrorizing us. And this man of God, he is responsible because he is not praying. That's what people say to us, especially to pastors. It is because pastor is not praying for me. That's why my family is in this trouble and problems. It is because pastor does not visit me. That's why I don't even understand if I belong to that church. It is because pastor does not call me. That's why I believe he don't, uh, he don't love me. But I have, to, I have come to tell you, your answer is not with the pastor. Your answer it is with the God. Lift up your eyes unto heaven. That is where your help come from. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us, when these men decided to go, another situation was happening inside the city. And the king went to, uh, to Elisha and he told Elisha, I want to tell you, man of God, by tomorrow at this time, if God will not kill me, your hand will not stand above your shoulder. And Elisha told him, pull down, pull down, honorable Mr. King. Tomorrow at this time, the seers of Barry and fra, it will cost, let me say a dollar. Hallelujah. And we know the story, that's what happened. My story is not in the city. My story is with these four lepers. And this is where I want to put yourself and see yourself in. See who that's what is holding you. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you're expecting and to see God doing in your life. I don't know what kind of a miracle that you want to receive from God. I don't know where you want to go. I don't know where your destiny is or where your destiny, uh, where God want you, I want you to go so that you can reach to your destiny. But I have come to tell you, until you break the camp and you loosen yourself and decide to advance, God will not be able to perform miracles in your life. 
listen unto me this morning. When these people, these four men, decided to go, the Bible tells us that is the day from lepers, from poor, from being people who are like nothing, they became millionaires. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, when they get to the camp of their enemies, they found everybody was gone. Because God, he used their feet to make their feet sound like a thousand of armies that were going against them. And they said to one another, the Israelites, they have hired other kings to come and join them to come and fight us. They left everything. You know what I believe? It is not in the Bible. But when I was reading that story, I came to realize the Bible says, money is the answer of all things. These lepers, from that day, we have never heard of their leprosy again. <laughs> they receive their gold. The Bible says when they get to those tents, the first thing they do, or they did, they eat and they were full. That's what a hungry person do. After they were full, their mind started working. And they turn and they look around, they saw, they saw gold, they saw silver, they saw good coal, and they take whatever they could be able to take. And they went and they hide somewhere. They came back, they went to the second tent, they found the same stuff, all goodies were there. And they took them and they, they went and they hide somewhere. And then when they get enough, they told one another, oh, we are not doing, are doing good. We have our brothers who are suffering back in the city and who rejected us. Let's go and call them and tell them what is happening here. You know what will happen? As you go up where the coolness is, as you advance to the hillside, as you advance to the mountains, I want to tell you something. Those who are looking down on you today, those who are calling you names today, those who are seeing you like you are not thinking that you, you know, nothing good can come out of you. They are the same people. They will come to lay their hands before you, asking for help. Hallelujah. And you know, I believe, you know, when the army went to uh, go to, to fight, they, Go carrying everything. What I'm trying to say is, in that camp, I believe there were medicines that could able to heal this lepers that was with these armies. And these guys, they took even medicines, and their lepers was no, uh, they were normal. In one day, they served a thousand of people in the whole city just because they decided to break the camp and advance and to go where their blessings were. In Jesus' name, what is holding you back? Hallelujah. What is pulling you down? Remember the story of Jabez? That guy, the Bible tells us, the name Jabez uh, means pain. His mom called him Jabez because when he was giving, uh, she was giving birth, she was in pain. And when Jabez came out, she said, this boy have caused me all this kind of pain. Your name is pain. And as Jabez was going up, because of that name, she, I mean, he was named by his mother. Though the Bible tells us, he was honorable than his brothers, but he was suffering. And most of us, when we look at ourselves in outside, we look good. We look like we are, have put everything together. We look that we are everything that is going, uh, is going well. Yet, if you come to our family, things are not working. It is hell in our houses. In us, we are hard because of our past. 
things that happen at our past are still eating us. Or somebody who hurt you, you are still holding that person. You cannot let him go. We, when we look at you, you are beautiful, you are handsome, you are looking good, but you are suffering inside. Yet, we call you honorable. I have come to tell you, when Jabez realized, this is not what I'm supposed to be. This is not where I'm supposed to, uh, to be. This is not what I I'm supposed to have. He decided to break his camp, the camp of pain and self-pity. And he decided to lift up his eyes and he called unto God. The Bible told uh, tells us when he prayed and he called unto God, he told God, oh God, may you bring this pain to an end, change my situation. May you bless me, expand my territories. And the Bible tells us, God had this prayer and he was blessed. Hallelujah. And I was a few. And others, what is holding us? It is not pain. It is not even all those kind of uh, bad and difficult things. What is holding us? It is the blessing that God has blessed us. The job that God gives you. And the, uh, the, the money that you have. The good family that you have. The good health that you have. You cannot serve God. You cannot advance. You cannot able to look forward and to see God blessing you and lifting you and giving you more because you are comfortable where you are. God wants you to change your mind, lift up your faith, look up where God is and tell God, I am not satisfied with what I have. I know you are God of abundance. I want more. I want more anointing. I want you, God, to lift me up. I want you, God, to expand my, uh, my family. I want you, God, to expand my ministry. I want you, God, to use me to reach to many people. I want you, God, to make me to become a name that will make your name be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And God is waiting for you. The Bible says we receive none because we are not asking. And today, or as from today, I want you to join me to become a radical person who will say, I have to move. I have to get out of here. Paul said, in the book of Philippians, I think chapter three, that I don't look back because I have not attained. I am not satisfied by where I am and what I have or and what I have done. I forget the past, but I press forward to go forward to attain and to achieve that's what God and my Lord Jesus Christ called me for so that I can receive the blessing, the glory that is being kept for me. Hallelujah. Let us forget that's what we have gone through and we have, where we have come from. And now tell God, we are waiting for you. Give us the grace, give us the power, give us the ability to advance. We know to go up, it is not easy. There are so many enemies, there are so many hindrances, but we are not stopping. We have to go, we have to move, we have to become. That's what God called us to become. Hallelujah. And I can feel the blessings of God being released. I can feel the grace of God coming. The good news, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter four, verse 16, let us come closer to the seat of mercy, where our savior and our God is. And we are going to receive the grace that will help us in time of need. Hallelujah. When you have the need of advancing and moving forward, God will release that grace. Go, tell God, I refuse to remain in this pain. 
I refuse to remain in this kind of situation. I refuse to be coordinated by these people. I refuse to remain in this place that look like a forsaken place. I have to go out of here because the Bible tells us God have a good plan for you. And his plan is not to die in college. His plan is to take you to Canaan. Hallelujah. Call up is good. There is presence of God. There is provision. There is the coolness of God. But there is a place more cooler. There's a place more beautiful. There's a place where there's everything. There's a place where is a promised land. And that is where we are supposed to go. Our Heavenly Father and our God in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you and we give you praise. Lord, thank you because of your one that you have spoken unto us this morning. Lord, I pray, may it have a place in our heart and our spirit. God, through this one, change our lives, change our faith, change our belief. Help us, oh dear Father, to become that's what God wants us to become. Help us, Father, to advance and to go where our promises are. Help us to go where our destiny is. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you and we exhort you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and we give that. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God sustain you. Amen. Wow, 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 wow. What can I say? Have you been blessed? You know, guys, I feel like we need to react to this message because... That is one of the most prolific messages I've had so far. You know, I've had so many messages, but that message right there, our brother Albert, is one of the messages that is, that is so profound. And if we can take it, my brothers and sisters, this message can, it can take us far. I don't know what holds you. Some of us may, may actually probably maybe don't know even what is holding us but there are spiritual things that hold us from attaining, getting to Canaan. You know, I love what you said, Brother Albert, you know, that the things that hold us are the blessings that we experience and we think this is it, you know? And there's a very big, uh, uh, there's a big uh, probability, uh, propensity of us just, just uh, settling down and thinking this is it, I don't need to go far. Yet God it wants to take us to a more, I like what you said, more cooler place, amen? And so I don't know what it is, but can we all stand right now, even at home? I'm gonna ask you to stand on your feet and you know your heart. Those that are watching us, you know, through social media, I don't know what, what really has been holding you, but for a few minutes, I'd like you to just as, you know, as a, as a sign of surrender, just open up your mouth and tell the Lord, Lord, time has come to, for me to break the cup. Just speak it to the Lord. You know how, you know, he understands your cry. He understands your plea. He will understand your petition right now. You know, there's one thing that I heard just the other day, that a camp is a temporary place. A camp is not a permanent residence. You know, when you pitch a tent, you know, there's, you pitch it because there's wind and everything, but the structure is, is temporary. So the Lord is telling us, break the cup. It could be maybe a, a, a cup of rejection. You, you've been there, you've been ostracized. You know, you feel like this is it. I cannot go forward just because of things people say to you. Right now, speak up. There's power in speaking up. There's power in words that you speak up right now. Release those words into the heavens right now. In the name of Jesus, say enough is enough. I am packing all my belongings right now. It is time for me to move on. It is time for me to move to a cooler place, to a more cooler place. And you know what? The angel of the Lord will take you. The angel of the Lord will carry you. I was reading the other day and the Lord was giving the children of Israel an instruction and telling them, I am sending an angel to go before you. And the angel will be able to fight all your battles. But he said this to the children of Israel, that you need to listen to the angel because if you turn to the left or right, and if you disobey him, he can bring destruction over your life. 
And so this is the comfort that I know that in spite of the fact of the, of the things that I'm going through right now or settlement in which I am right now, the Lord is willing, ready and able to send an angel before you in the name of Jesus. And above everything, his presence is going to go with you. He, is want, he wants you to meet people. There are places he wants you to venture. There are people he wants you to begin talking to. The adventures that he wants you to explore in the name of Jesus. Remember what the Bible told us, that the heavens belong to God, but God has given the world, the earth to humanity. There are things that are yet to be discovered. There are things that God wants you, he wants us to walk into so that we can experience full blessings of the Lord. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. As you pack your belongings right now, ready to turn and go to a, to a more better place, right now in the name of Jesus, may the presence of God be with you. May the Lord's presence come upon you in the name of Jesus. Begin to unhinge the camp. Begin to unhinge the, 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 the ropes of your camp. Tie it together. Put it in the bag. It is time to move on. I feel it is time to move on. There are people that have been in a job and you've been unhappy for this for, for a long, long time. The Lord says it is time to close down the shop and move on because God has great plans for you. There is a great place that God is calling you unto in the name of Jesus. And you don't even have to worry how it's going to be just like the lepers, you know, they, 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 they made a societal mission even to go to the, to the Sumerian camp. And lo and behold, the Lord had prepared them even to go and take over the whole camp of the Sumerians. And not only for them, but also for the children of Israel. Oh, God can use anybody. God can use you. If God can use those lepers, he can use you today. Maybe to bring deliverance to a whole community in the name of Jesus. I am seeing wealth coming to you. I am seeing great things coming to you in the name of Jesus. There's somebody who is going to be watching this program right now. And I feel the Lord this right now. You can feel it in your spirit. that the Lord is telling you, remove, get ready. Pack all your comes and go. And the place where he's taking you, you'll be in awe. And you will actually want him to pinch yourself. Because you won't be believing what God will be doing through you. But those things will never be done if you remain where you are right now. If you remain where you are, if you maintain the status quo, nothing is going to change. But God is speaking to you and telling you, it is time to close camp. It is time to, to, to break camp and turn and go because where I'm taking you, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no the mind comprehended. What I, the Lord, can do for you in the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you right now. May you break that cup right now in the name of Jesus. You have been rejected. You are in depression. Break the cup of, of depression in the name of Jesus. And such forth by the mighty power of God. The angel of the Lord is going to go with you. The presence of the Lord is going to go with you right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, speak up. Speak up right now. Speak up and say enough is enough. I'm breaking this cup in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Father, we honor you. We exalt you. Yes, we are going to go with you. Yes, because your presence, Father, shall go with us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just as Job is saying, enough and now is enough. I cannot leave off the experiences of my mother, but I'm going to experience, I'm going to have a God experience, and I'm breaking down from this pain. How can I leave this pain? I'm not the one who experienced this pain. Yet I live under the experiences of my mother. I'm breaking off the camp of pain. And I'm going forward to experience the joy of the Lord. Lord, if you want to, if you can make me rich, and if you can bless me, Lord, bless me. The Lord is ready to bless you. Hallelujah. All the cattle in a thousand hills belong to the Lord. You only need one cow. One cow from the Lord is all you need. And you'll be rich enough. You'll be a millionaire. You'll be able not only to help yourself and to assist you, your community, but you'll be an influence in the name of Jesus. God, may you give us influence. Give us influence to this community. Give us influence, Lord, even to the people 
that you will be coming across with in the name of Jesus. We break the cup of looking down on ourselves, thinking that we cannot go anywhere, See, looking upon where we have come from, looking up on one on us on a on a, on a, on, a, on, a, on a geographical origin in the name of Jesus. We are breaking the cup. I'm calling for millionaires in the name of Jesus. That Father God, this will be a common thing in our midst to say that Joel is a millionaire, to say that Sister Veronica is a millionaire, to say that uh, Brother Albert is a millionaire will be a very common thing. Why? Because we are going to a more cooler place in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I refuse status quo. I refuse status quo in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. Father God, I thank you because you're bringing deliverance right now into homesteads right now. There are people that have been struggling for many, many years. It is time to break that come. Financial comes that, you know, financial struggle from month to month. We are struggling. You know, you can't pay your bills and it's, it's like you've been here for many, many years and the devil, the devil has held you captive. In the name of Jesus, I speak a release in the name of Jesus. Spiritual release, financial release in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Financial release in the name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, I release it in the name of Jesus. Experience financial freedom in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I feel in my spirit to say this. That a time is coming when $20 will be nothing. $100 will be nothing. Even giving somebody $100 will be like pocket change for you. Giving somebody $1,000 will be a pocket change for you. Giving somebody uh, in thousands will be pocket change. If you can see it, if you can see it, you can have it. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We are breaking camp. We are breaking camp. We are breaking camp of the enemy. Spiritual comes in the name of Jesus to the glory and all of your name. Hallelujah. Father, we receive this message and we apply, we apply ourselves to it to the glory and honor of your name. Father, we exalt you and we bless you in Jesus' precious name. Do you receive it, church? Do you receive it? Do you receive it? Do you receive it, Zoom Church? Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, 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 wow. You want to say something? Uh, Just like uh, Albert said, mm -hmm. if you're holding any bitterness and unforgiveness, yes. release. Mm -hmm. Yeah, release it because it's a hindrance to where God is taking you. Mm -hmm. If you're holding things that are, uh, uh, whatever, whatever is in your heart right now, and you know it, just release it so that God can work in you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to break any bondages. I don't know who may, even who may be listening to even bondages like addictions. We want to break them because they are hindrance yes. to what God wants to do in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus yes. Christ, right now, my God of glory, any kind of bondage, oh yes. God, any in kind the name of addiction of that has held your people, oh God, yes. even yes. out yes. there, my God of glory, in mm. Facebook, in the name of Jesus, yes. we take authority of our every power and every in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. We arrest every work of darkness in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. We yes. declare release in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus, you are made manifest. Hallelujah. To every work of the enemy yes. in the name of Jesus. Name of we Jesus. proclaim freedom, oh God. Mm. We proclaim freedom right now in yes. the name of Jesus. From yes. every addiction, oh God. Yes. To the glory and the honor of your name. Yes. We set free, my God of glory. Mm. Whoever may be listening to the listening, my God of glory. Yes. And we declare salvation, oh God. Yes. We call them to the Lord in the mighty name of mm. Jesus. Where there is bitterness, oh God. Mm. Where there is anger of a part. Mm. Where there is unforgiveness, oh God. Yes. We we release them in the name of Jesus. Yes. We release those people, oh God. Hallelujah. We release those things, oh God of glory. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the so name of Jesus. Move on, oh God. Mm. My God of glory, we declare forgiveness, oh yes. God. Yes. Healing of a power. Healing of the heart and the mind, oh God. Mm. We lose that in the name of Jesus. Mm. Over your people, oh God. Mm. Our lives in the name of Jesus. Mm. We give you praise and we give you the glory. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, the Lord bless you so much.
Brother Albert, may the Lord, Lord God, bless you so much. What an honor to listen to God. And this is the message that we all needed. I feel this is my message. You know, I feel like I, there are accounts that I need to break up in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you guys, God is faithful and he is going to see us through. Amen. We have to believe that God is who he says that he is and he can carry us through. No matter what we are, we are going through right now, we can break up and we can get to our Canaan. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. I just want to uh, take this opportunity uh, because of our time. I'm going to give uh, maybe a few of us, maybe to give us, uh, uh, maybe uh, to, to, to say hello to us. I'm going to ask um, Gide, you're the first one. Uh, please, can you give us, uh, can you say hello to us? And uh, because of our time, and uh, maybe we can give a few more people to give us some chance. <laughs> 